Okay, I now want to talk briefly about the citric acid cycle, okay? The citric acid cycle um, has been talked about by many, many people. It's an extremely important cycle in biology. I mean, in introductory biology, in, in any, at any level, the citric acid cycle seems to come up as an important concept. Um, it goes a little bit further in biochemistry, though, because we talk about the regulation. We really break down the cycle, okay, and try to understand, you know, piece by piece, reaction by reaction, what's going on. Not just a broad general overview, we want some details, okay? So what I have here is the classic citric acid cycle, um, you know, uh, diagram, and they start with an acetyl-CoA molecule here, and as we move through, we have a total of eight steps, okay? There's a total of eight steps. Now, um, you know, basically, Acetyl-CoA enters the cycle, and the acetyl-CoA is converted to citrate, okay? And that's done by an enzyme known as citrate synthase, okay? So citrate synthase takes oxaloacetate plus acetyl-CoA, okay, and forms citrate, all right? And that's an extremely important reaction because that's one of the reactions that is regulated in this cycle and it makes sense again it's the first reaction in the cycle you're going to want to re regulate that first reaction okay because that has a lot of um, influence on what happens in the rest of the cycle so okay oxaloacetate plus citrate plus acetyl-CoA gives us citrate okay and that's catalyzed by an enzyme known as citrate synthase okay now in the second step here the citrate is converted by an isomerization, okay? So essentially this is an isomerization reaction where citrate becomes isocitrate, all right? And, you know, there's not a whole lot of difference in between the two. Um, but it's a small, again, isomerization. It forms another six carbon molecule. So I should, I should have made that a point before. Oxaloacetate's four carbon molecule. Acetyl-CoA is a two-carbon molecule. When you combine them together, you produce a six-carbon molecule, okay? And in the second step, the isomerization, you still have a six-carbon molecule, and you form isocitrate. And that's through an enzyme called acetonitase, okay? And um, not an extremely important reaction because it's not regulated, but still an interesting, uh, an interesting reaction. So in the third step, you have the first oxidative decarboxylation, okay? So this is the first oxidative decarboxylation where isocitrate becomes a molecule known as, or is converted to uh, a molecule known as alpha-ketoglutorate, okay? And again, that's a citrate, that's isocitrate, which has six carbons. NAD plus is converted to NADH, so it is reduced. So NAD plus is reduced to NADH and isocitrate is oxidized to form alpha ketoglutorate. Okay. And there's this is an oxidative decarboxylation because you lose CO2 gas. Okay, CO2 comes off at this at this point. So that's why that's an important reaction. And the enzyme that catalyzes this first oxidative decarboxylation, and this is now step three. Um, is isocitrate dehydrogenase, okay? So if we go to step four, okay, we go to step four, we have another oxidative decarboxylation, okay? So an oxidative decarboxylation, which means NAD plus is being reduced to NADH, and um, alpha-ketoglutorate is, is being oxidized to what's known as succinyl-CoA. The other important part there is that there is a CoA molecule, okay, coenzyme A molecule, that's going to be attached to the alpha-ketoglutorate. Now, the alpha-ketoglutorate is a five-carbon molecule, so and it makes sense because in the last step, we lost, a, we lost CO2, okay, so we lost a single carbon. Now, we're going through another oxidative decarboxylation where we're losing a CO2 molecule from alpha-ketoglutorate. So you might have guessed that now we have a four-carbon molecule, okay? And it's known as succinyl-CoA, and um, we also produce NADH, H+, and CO2. And in the next step, step five, we have formation of succinate and GTP. So this is an important step, too, 
and all of the oxidative decarboxylation steps are important. But this one's important also because we produce GTP. Okay, and GTP, GTP can be easily converted by, an, by another enzyme to ATP. So essentially producing GTP is no different than producing ATP. It's a high energy molecule that can be used for um, energy purposes in the cell. And um, anyway, so we have succinyl-CoA, we have GDP, okay, plus inorganic phosphate. And when we add that together, we wind up with suscanate, which is, a, again, a four-carbon molecule, one GTP molecule, and one CoA molecule, okay? And the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called suscanyl-CoA synthase, okay? Suscanyl-CoA synthase. And finally, we move into step six here, which is the formation of fumarate and FADH2. So, again, another important reaction because we're producing FADH2. These reduced, what, what are known as reduced electron acceptors, NADH and FADH2, are extremely important for oxidative phosphorylation, okay? These molecules donate their electrons to the electron transport chain and they are one of the reasons that it's able to pump protons and produce that proton gradient that eventually um, leads to the production of high amounts of ATP. So this is kind of setting the tone for the rest of those reactions. So in the formation of fumarate, we have suscanate, which is a four carbon molecule. We're again, reducing FAD plus to FADH2, okay? And we're forming what's known as fumarate, okay? Which still has four carbons. And that's through an enzyme known as suscanate dehydrogenase, okay? And step seven in the process, we're going to convert fumarate to malate, okay? And that's a, um, a hydration, because what you're going to do is you're going to add water, okay? So you're going to add water across a double bond, and you're going to hydrate it, okay? Essentially, you're going to add two hydrogen molecules. And fumarate is going to be converted into malate. And the enzyme for that is called fumarase that catalyzes that particular reaction. And in the final step, Okay, step eight, we have another oxidative decarboxylation. Okay, malate, again, a four carbon molecule plus NAD plus, uh, is converted to oxaloacetate. Okay, so it winds up at the same place that it began, which is an interesting fact here, which is why some people say that the citric acid cycle acts as a catalyst, essentially. I mean, you wind up producing the same molecule at the end, the oxaloacetate, plus NADH, of course, because NAD plus is being reduced. And that's catalyzed by a by a um, enzyme called malate dehydrogenase. All right. So those are the main reactions. That's a walkthrough of what they are. Um, the pictures do some justice to it, but they don't really do justice to the details. Um, I didn't do justice to the details either, but I, I do have my notes here, so I, I could show them, and I, I think I will at the end. The next thing I want to just talk about here is the net results of this cycle, okay? And the net result is of one turn of the citric acid cycle is three NADHs, one FADH2, one GTP, and two molecules of CO2, okay? Um, so that's important, okay? So that's important. Um, I made a, I actually made a brief mistake now that I'm thinking about it. I should have said it's an oxidative reaction, um, but the final step, but it's not an oxidative decarboxylation, so please excuse me for um, saying that. I just got caught up in the oxidative decarboxylation, but um, <laughs> regardless, it, it's not. But you will produce, as a net result, 3 NADH, 1 FADH2, one GTP, and two molecules of CO2. And um, if you think about it, glucose is a six carbon molecule. So if I were to put two pyruvate molecules, two three carbon pyruvate molecules, and convert two of those to acetyl-CoA, one glucose molecule actually produces double. So it produces six NADHs, two FADH2s, two GTPs, and um, again, four CO2s. So everything would be doubled. And you should also recall, this is not in this particular model, but it is an extremely important um, set of reactions. And that is that there's a step before this that converts pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. 
and it's catalyzed by what's known as pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, and this complex is a, is a group of enzymes essentially that eventually pr produce acetyl-CoA from uh, pyruvate. And this is another oxidative decarboxylation, so it produces CO2 and NADH. So that, that might have been where I was getting a little silly before. But again, very important process.